All right, much better. And already we have another receiver on the, uh, and no, it's not the one you saw earlier because that one's right there. So yeah, we got room to work. And all my tools are put away. And uh, yeah, nice bench work here. Nice. Oh uh, yeah, this thing here's for Sega. Yeah, I meant to put that away too, but I didn't. So I'll do that right now. Yeah, so uh, this one here works, but it has dirty controls. And I'm going to get it inside there and uh, spray some contact cleaner in there. And see what bulbs that are burned out in here, because I know a few bulbs are burned out. And I want to get inside there. And we'll go through and we'll see how this thing performs. So yeah, this is uh, one of the little brothers. Ugh. You can see it's the RS-2003. Right there. And this is the RS-2010. There's some confusion about the ratings on this because the original manual says it's 100 watts per channel. But the power packs in are, are Darlington SDK-80s, which indicates it's an 80 watt per channel unit. This one here I know is rated at, I shouldn't say I know, I guess I'm guessing, is rated at 35 watts per channel. So we're going to go ahead and take the lid off of this thing. And you see some crud on that glass there, right there. Take some Windex to this thing and get it cleaned up really nice. And, uh, yeah. This is another estate sale find. So I paid 20 bucks for that. 20 bucks for that. Um... 20 bucks for a set of speakers, which were a set of ARs, which were really fantastic. And that was it. I paid 60 bucks for those items. And uh, needless to say, this is worth far more than $20. And that one, in non-working conditions, 100 and something dollars right now on eBay. If it works, you're looking at about 250 300 bucks. But we'll get it working. And no, I'm not a collector. I'm a seller. And I love to tinker. So let's get inside here and have a look. Well, I popped the lid off, and you know what? It looks pretty damn clean inside there. Pretty clean, indeed. But there is some uh, crud. You see this crud inside here? It's going to be easy to get to because these side panels have two screws that hold them on, and these side panels just pop off. So you can really get a nice clean inside there. And I have... Uh, some cleaner for that too so you can see dust down inside these knobs here we're going to take some windex to those and then uh you can see dirt along the back side there and we'll take care of that as well all right i'm going to start hitting this down with some windex i'm going to clean these up with windex but i don't think windex is going to get that discoloration off however i have a product that i'm going to try on here and uh, we'll see. And uh, no, I haven't double checked to see which bulbs I need yet, but I'll get to that too. I want to clean up all of the uh, dirt. You can see there's dirt inside those heat vents there. Um, the dirt along around the speaker speaker terminals, and you see dust on those thumb nuts there. I want to get all of that off. And then, uh, yeah, so let's see how my little uh, potion will work on here. All right, the stuff I'm going to try here is called Major Shine. As you can see, it works for aluminum, fiberglass, plastic polish. Again, I don't know what it's going to do for these, but we're going to find out, so... Let's give it a try. Uh, maybe I should put something under here. Like what? Ah, eh, screw it. Oh yeah, I can see right away. It's doing it. Nice. Oh my. Doing it. It's 
stuff's pretty amazing. Okay, so we'll do the edges because this is what faces the user. Oh, yeah. Looking like a mirror, in fact. Gonna be a tricky one there because there's the oxide we're pulling off of it right there. So let's just keep going. And well, we can wipe this down real quick so we can see where we're at. So I'll work on this a little bit more. As you can see, there is a huge difference in these guys here. Yeah, so I'll keep working on this, and then uh, I'll be back when they're done. Well, there they are. They're pretty damn clean, I must say. Oh, yeah. Much nicer. So we'll set those aside. And before I take these knobs off, you can see the crud inside there. You really can. You see, they're just kind of dull. They're not brilliant, you know. They should be sparkly. These are all machined aluminum, turned on a lathe, perhaps. And they should be very sparkly. And I did take do this section here. You see how the sparkleness drops off here. You get over here, it starts to look bright and clean. So I'm going to do that as, there as well. But you can't do it on here. Because you will remove all of that black lettering. And we don't want to do that. So we'll be relegated to use uh, Windex on that. So... Anyway, let me get back to, uh, no, let's plug this thing in and see what lights are working and what's not working. I already know uh, both channels work on this and the inputs work. I've tested those already. And uh, so there's that. Let's turn this thing on, which is turned on right here through the headphones. So we're powered up. And I do not have an antenna on here, but I do have some headphones here. Put the plug in. They're working. I'm not tuned in though. What do you see here? Turn the volume up. Let's see if we can find the channel here. So that's working. And uh, yeah, so let's see what light bulbs are not working. How do we do that? Well, that's easy. Flip this up like so. And then uh, you watch these guys here. Let's keep you in camera here. So you tape monitor. That one doesn't seem to be working because that one should be right there. That's not working. Uh, phono. Phono's not working either. So I'm on Phono now. And uh, that other one is Tuner, and that's not working because that should light up whenever you're on AM or FM. So those three bulbs are out. I believe the stereo bulb is out as well. But uh, in order for me to... I could test it, or I could just put an antenna on it. If it comes in red, then we know it's good. But if not, then... We just have to replace all four bulbs. And they're just these little shit bulbs here. These guys right here. So, it's just a matter of tracing them down and soldering them back into place. But, uh, yeah, before I determine if the stereo light is bad, I will determine if it actually lights up when I have an antenna on it so we'll be right back both channels are working uh, I didn't put much of an antenna on there 
just a piece of wire. But I'm confident that, that the uh, FM stereo light is burned out as well. I like that so FM mute. It's quieter when you're changing dials. I could go for an antenna. I will see better days. So from all of us at Bear, thank you and be safe. I'm going to check right now to see how accurate the dial is to the tuner. It may need an alignment. Whether it's a Happy Meal, a Big Mac, or both, Bear... Yeah, I need to, I need to put a real antenna on here. Let me let me get one. Powered up my air compressor and blew that out um, before I go trying to align these, align, align this tuner. So we'll see what happens here. Bring you back over here and uh, turn you back on. So where are we at here? Let's see what channel this is. Okay. So we're at 93.1. But what's playing is not 93.1. So. That might be 93.1. I'll have to wait for a call. It sounds like it. Yeah, I think I got that aligned pretty damn good. Because where the, the radio station I'm listening to is 93.1. And I'm right there, about there. The next one we'll go to is 97.1, the drive. I don't know if you can hear my headphones, but they're like right in there, they're dialed. This is 97.1. And then I know another one that's uh, the news channel, 105.9. Five. Pretty close. I mean, I, I'm not going to sweat it. But anyway, your tuner adjustments are down in there. And, uh, again, you really should not be in the basement doing this because you're in the basement. Anyway, I got this makeshift antenna ran up here, you know. Which is better than my single wire, so I think I'm gonna call that a success. And uh, yeah, and uh, I'm gonna get back to cleaning this thing up. Now I'll turn this off and uh, start cleaning these knobs. Yeah, I'll take my little screwdriver here, wrapped in this uh, Windex sock, and we'll go through these vents here really nice and. Uh, Get all that dirt and dust out of there. 
and uh, because that's nothing more than a fur jacket uh, for a heat sink, you know, it'll just uh, allow it to get a little hotter, and not to mention it's ugly, you know, so... Good to put the time in. And uh anyway, that's what we're gonna be doing. Cleaning the back side of this thing up. Alright, I got some lights turned down low so we can see the face of it lit up. I got my phone with some YouTube royalty free music that we're gonna pipe through the auxiliary section here. And we have it hooked up to some turn this light on here for a second. AR speakers. So yeah, we're gonna Let's just see how that sounds there. Okay. Turn that light back off. Creates a nice mood here. And what do you say we hit some music? Turn the volume up a little bit. Right now I got the EQ set off. So there's no EQ on it. Now we'll hit the EQ on. a little bit, on the mids, a little on the bass, Let's try a different style music here. Nice clean sound. Balance. Right. Left. The Fisher RS 2003. I believe this is from like 1977 or 78, but don't shoot me on that because I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, so that's what I've been working on: vintage receivers and tape decks, and that's the big brother to the one we just looked at. But yeah. So anyway, hey guys, thanks for watching my videos.